Hey everybody. So over many years of working on dashboard projects, uh, I found that one of the biggest factors in your project success is not the data itself, but actually asking questions about why you're building what you're building, what you're building, and who's going to be involved. It's those early stage questions that can really make the difference. So I want to highlight a few of those. Um, just three of the biggest ones I've seen come up that seem to have the biggest impact. Uh, and hopefully get you pointed in the right direction so you have a better chance of success on your own project. So let me just hop right into it. The big question <laughs> that people need to ask is, do you actually need a dashboard? Um, a lot of times we build dashboards uh, because they look cool. <laughs> you see this one in the background here. This is just a little sample dashboard I built. All visual design, very little insight, but it looks neat. And it sort of sells to what I call the data-driven fantasy people have. This idea that something you see in a movie with people looking at a bunch of screens with cool animations is what being data-driven looks like. But in reality, it usually doesn't. Dashboards often are just a place that we're putting lots of data that we kind of loosely understand all up in one place so we can kind of badly interpret it. And that's not what you want a dashboard to be. Uh, the reality is being data-driven looks typically looks more like a domain expert taking a really deep dive into a very specific set of data to answer a very specific question, right? And that's not how dashboards are typically used. So right up front asking yourself, is a dashboard the right answer to what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to figure out here uh, is important. Dashboards are great for a lot of different things. I'm not somebody who says you shouldn't build dashboards. I just think people need to think a little more critically about whether or not it's a match for what they're doing. Now, if you're doing reporting, if you need to get something up on a wall that shows how your progress is doing to your whole team, right? Those are the types of scenarios where a dashboard might make a lot of sense. There's a million other scenarios where it makes sense too. So obviously it's specific to your use case. Think about your specific scenario, um, but take the time to really dig into that and think about what question you're actually trying to ask and if the answer is a dashboard or not a dashboard. The next big one is starting to think about who's involved in a project. Uh, this is something that people just skip right over. So when we talk about who's involved, we're talking about who's paying, who's green lighting or approving a project, who's actually going to be using it, uh, who's cheerleading for you internally, you know, who's your biggest, your biggest cheerleader internally to get the thing made. And a lot of times people just assume that's all the same person. And they really focus in on, you know, the end user only, the person who's actually going to be using the dashboard, and they kind of skip over everyone else. But the reality is that drastically minimizes your chance of the thing actually getting built, because you have to consider the needs of the person who's actually going to write the check, make sure you understand what they're trying to get out of it, what success looks like to them. You also have to understand the person who's maybe green lighting or approving the project. That might not be the same person who's actually using it or the person who is, uh, who's come up with the idea of building it in the first place. It could be somebody completely different. Um, and the last one there I mentioned, who's cheerleading for you internally. There's typically one person who is cheerleading. And it might be you. If you're the one who's come up with a dashboard idea, that might be you. But if it's not you, if you are uh, selling a dashboard project to another organization, let's say, Figure out who on the team is the one that's most excited about it, most wants to get, and most wants to get it built, and make sure you understand where they are coming from as well. Taking the step is so important, um, and it's it's kind of it's it's easy to just breeze over this as being like, oh, this is just sales or something like that. It's not really about sales. It's about understanding the human factor in building something. Um, we like to think that we're all super practical and the end user who's actually going to be using this thing is the only person who matters because they're the one driving change by using this tool inside the organization. But in real life, things don't work that way, right? There are a lot of different conflicting needs, people who see the role that something's playing differently. And you have to consider all those perspectives. And that gets into the next really important point, which is being honest about why something is actually being built. Uh, and when I say being honest, I want to put emphasis on honest here. So when you ask somebody, hey, why do you want to build this dashboard? The answer is usually something like, oh, I want actionable insights, or we want to you know, have a deep dive into our data. 
But if you look a layer deeper, <laughs> the reason people are building dashboards is often a little more complex. Somebody might be saying, hey, I want to look like I'm the one driving data-driven insights in my organization so I can get promoted because I really want to be the new chief information officer at this company or something like that. Uh, it might be uh, somebody saying, hey, we want to build this dashboard so that our clients look at us and see this cool dashboard and think we're data-driven and think that we're focused on the data and doing analysis and we're trying to do this so that we look really good to clients. It's not actually going to be used very much. Um, it can be hard to get in, to get down to this layer because people honestly don't really want to say that, right? Like it's a it's a fairly uh, it's a fairly deep thing for somebody to say, and they're they're not just going to openly offer that kind of insight up. But digging in a little bit and understanding and taking that last step of understanding who's who in the organization and talking to all of them, you can sometimes start to triangulate what the actual motivation is for using something. And that's gonna help you determine what success and failure looks like. Um, because success and failure for a project that is being used, let's say, by analysts, somebody operational who's making critical decisions and their dashboard, your only goal is trying to make them 10% more efficient. Um, success or failure in, in that context is very different from success or failure in the context of somebody saying, hey, I want to put a cool marketing screen up on my wall on this TV we have in the office, and I just want to have a stream of recent social media mentions and then show how much traction we're getting or sh virality we're getting or something like that. Uh, and it's more about motivating people and keeping people engaged. Totally different versions of success or failure there. And they're really centered around understanding the why. Because in both cases, somebody's going to tell you something along, along the lines of, well, we just want to have the data so we can make better decisions and be more actionable. All those buzzwords kind of get in the way. <laughs> so that's my advice. Um, three big factors that go into dashboard project success. If you're working on something like this, let me know below. I'd love to hear from you and hear kind of what you've experienced and what you've seen being important factors in all of this. Uh, I'm thinking about sending more of this kind of content out on the newsletter to folks that are working on their own dashboards. Obviously, I'm going to keep sending my newsletters and everything like that, but I might just add a small section to each one that talks a little bit about these uh, sort of like operational insights or these insights that come from actually doing dashboard projects in larger organizations. So if you have more you want to hear about, let me know what you want to hear about. I'm super interested. I'd love the ideas uh, and I'll try to work uh, more of that into my content. Anyway, thanks so much, everybody. Have a great week and I'll, uh, I'll be with you next week with more dashboard insights. Bye.